In English, there are eight different types of words. There are nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. And the eight types are called parts of speech. And each part of speech has a specific use and function. And in this lesson, we will look at each of the parts of speech. Nouns. Well, nouns are words that name things. Okay, so if you just open your eyes and look around you at everything, the words for everything you see they are nouns. So they can name things, for example, a table or a chair, people, so Mark or Jane, or perhaps even a driver or pilot, animals, for example, dog and cat, and of course, places. New York, England. So here is an example. Mark is driving a car. And in this sentence, there are two nouns. Mark and car. The dog is in the garden. So, so dog is a noun. Garden is a noun. Finally, another example, let's go to London. So London is a place, it is a noun. Pronouns. Pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. So sometimes we do not want to use a noun, so instead we use a pronoun. Example, Mark is in the kitchen. He is cooking. So here we can see Mark. This is a noun. And he's in the kitchen. But for the second sentence, we don't want to repeat the word Mark because it doesn't sound very good. So we replace the word Mark with he. So that is an example of a pronoun. It represents a noun. And he is in fact an example of a personal subject pronoun. And the others are I, you, he, she, it, we and they. Mark does not like me. Okay, so my name is, is Andrew. But perhaps in this sentence, we don't want to say my name. We just want to refer to me. So this is an example of a personal object pronoun. And it's describing a person. Here are all the personal object pronouns. Me, you, him, her, it, us and them. Is that David's car? No, it is mine. So in this sentence, we have, um, we have two pronouns. We have it, which is um, a pronoun, and it is referring to the car, it's replacing the car. And it is mine is also referring to the car, and it expresses possession. It is telling us who the car belongs to, who owns the car, but it is replacing the word car. And we call it a possessive pronoun. And here are the others. Mine, yours, his, hers, ours and theirs. 
So these are some examples of pronouns, but of course there are many other pronouns. These are only examples. Adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe nouns or pronouns. So adjectives, they give us more information about a noun or a pronoun. They modify a noun or a pronoun. For example, they can tell us um, the, the quality of the noun or perhaps the type of noun. Mark is driving a black car. So car is the noun, the object, and the word black is telling us more information about the car. This is describing the car. It's not a blue car, it's a black car. An adjective can also describe the size. Mark is driving a big car. Or perhaps the number or the quantity. Mark has several cars. Possession. It is his car. Okay, so this is telling us that the car belongs to Mark. It is telling us the possession. And the possessive adjectives are my, your, his, her, its, our, and their. Okay? And again, there are lots of different types of adjectives. These are just a few examples. Verbs. Very important. Verbs are words that show an action. Example, Mark drives a bus. This is an action, to drive. Jane is drinking a cup of coffee. So this word, drink, drinking, it tells us what Jane is doing. It's an action. We played football. This is um, an example of the verb in the past tense. We played football. Verbs can also show a state. For example, Mark is tired. So this isn't, it's not an action. It is, it is describing um, an emotion or the state, the state of Mark. Jane was angry. I feel ill. So it describes the state of often the subject. We can see, so we're describing the state of Mark, who is the subject of the sentence. Now, you can see that all of these three verbs that I have underlined we consider them to be the main verbs because they are the verbs that are describing the main action. Okay? So main verbs. But there is also another verb here. Is. This is in fact the verb to be. This is the third person singular of the verb to be. Is. But this is not a main verb. This is an auxiliary verb. Auxiliary means help. So this verb is, it is helping the verb drink. It helps to express the main verb. And in fact, this sentence is drinking. It is an example of the present continuous. So is is an auxiliary verb that helps us form 
the present continuous. Okay, so it's important to distinguish a, a main verb from an auxiliary verb. And here, all of the verbs are in fact main verbs. They all express um, the state. Okay, so this is interesting because here the same verb, um, the verb to be, here we are using it like a main verb because it is expressing the main idea which is a state. Okay? Verbs have different tenses which indicate time, either past, present or future, or aspect, whether the action is completed or continuous. Okay? So verbs are very, very important. Adverbs are words that describe or modify verbs. Mark is running quickly. So here is the verb, running, that is the action. And quickly is describing the action. It is giving us more information about the action. And here, this is an example of an adverb of manner. Jane never drinks coffee. This is an adverb describing the verb drink. And it is an adverb of frequency. We will go there tomorrow. So there is an adverb of place. It is describing where we will go. Adverbs can also describe or modify other adverbs. So here is the same mark is running quickly. So we have the verb running. The adverb quickly is describing running. And now we can add another adverb which describes quickly. Mark is running very quickly. So this is another adverb which is modifying quickly. And together, both of them very quickly, they are describing the action. And finally, adverbs can also describe or modify adjectives. Mark is tired. Here is the adjective, tired, and we can say Mark is very tired. So here the adverb very is describing the adjective tired, very tired. The car is expensive. The car is too expensive. Okay, so adverbs. They can modify verbs, adverbs, or adjectives. Conjunctions. They join words, phrases, or clauses together. Common examples of conjunctions, and, or, because, so, but, while, for. And of course, there are many others. I like cats and dogs. So the conjunction and is joining together the words cats with dogs. The telephone rang while I was cooking dinner. So here we have two clauses. The telephone rang. I was cooking dinner. And the conjunction while it joins these two clauses together because we don't want to make separate sentences because the two clauses are related 
in time. So we want to join them together with the conjunction while. I am hungry, but I don't have any food. Again, we have two clauses or parts of the sentence. I am hungry. I don't have any food. And both of these ideas are related. So we want to join them together with the conjunction but. Prepositions. They connect noun phrases to another part of the sentence. And the word preposition, it means place before. And that is because the preposition is usually before the noun phrase. And there are three common uses of prepositions. The first one is to describe a place. Mark is in the kitchen. The lamp is on the table. So these are prepositions of place. They can also describe time. I am going to London for a week. So this one, for, it is in fact describing the duration. Please don't talk during the lesson. Again, this is describing duration. It's time. It's the concept of time. They can also sometimes describe a method. I will send you the offer by email. So how will I send you the offer? By email. It is the method. He gave me an answer in writing. In writing. So this is describing the method. And you might perhaps think that writing is a verb, not a noun. Well, in fact, it is formed um, from a verb. It is the ing form of the verb. And in this context, it is called a gerund. And a gerund is when we use a verb as a noun. So we are considering, um, we are treating this word like a noun. So it is a noun phrase in writing. Interjections. So in fact, they are small words without any real grammatical value. So this means that interjections, um, they do not modify other parts of speech and other parts of speech do not modify interjections. So they are completely independent. They are sort of um, alone and by themselves a little bit. They usually express an emotion or some sort of an exclamation. And they are very common in spoken English. So be careful, uh, we do not usually um, write these. So an example is brr, it's cold in here. So brr <laughs> is to express feeling cold. Damn, I missed the train. So damn expresses disappointment or frustration or maybe even anger. Shh, please don't talk during the film. Shh. So shh is when we ask people to be quiet. And here the lady is showing um, the physical gesture that we use in English when we want someone to be quiet. We put the finger uh, in front of our lips and then we say shh. 
And finally, hooray, I won the lottery. So hooray um, is expressing feeling pleased. So we are happy, we are pleased. Okay, so those are interjections.